Last time we talked about uh, double integrals over uh, rectangular region R. I suppose they chose that because <clears throat> what we're doing is um, integrating uh, over a uh, rectangular region. Um, and which mean which meant that x's and the y's were just going from you know the x's were going from a to b <clears throat> and then the y's are going from you know two other numbers to c to d <clears throat> and so that's we're what we're saying is yeah we're doing a, the double interval and we're integrating over a rectangular region. That's what we did in the first section there. Well, what, uh, <laughs> what happens is, so um, that may not be the case though, where <clears throat> the, the region we're integrating over is not a rectangle. <clears throat> and so that's what we're going to discuss today today and the, the term they're going to use here is a general region and so here's the uh, uh, for example all right so yeah let's say x is going between a and b but the y actually here is not going from c to d you see here let's say our region here looks more like this, okay? And so y, the y's don't go from C to D. Nice, nice, neat, just number C to number D. No, the y's, and this is kind of how we'll indicate it, the y's go from this curve up to this curve. That's how the y's go, right? So they go from this y to this y. Well, of course, what this is, this y is a function of x, call it uh, g1x, and then this y is g2x, <clears throat> g2 of x. And so the y's are going from g1 to g2, and, you know, the x's are just the same old a to b, but... That's, that's what's going to be different here. These general regions, you don't have a nice number for the limits of both variables. Your y is going to, in, in this particular case, the y is going to depend on a function of x. Okay? Now, the, the idea is the same. We're still, still trying to find that volume. You know, here, <coughs> I just love drawing these, so let me draw them one more time. All right, so here, you know, we're going from over this rectangular region, you know, we're going up to the, uh, whatever the curve z equals f of x, y is. So we're, we're doing the volume to that curve, you know, whatever it, it looks like. We're doing that volume. That's, that's what we're finding here is that volume, okay? So we're doing the same thing here. It's just now that <coughs> region we're doing it over so we've got, you know, a curve. I'm doing it over this, which, all right, so <clears throat> A to B, so it looks more like something like this, if I can sort of translate it to uh, three dimensions here. It gets a little, you see what I'm saying? So now instead of doing this volume where the base is a rectangle, here the base, so I'm still doing that volume up to that, to that curve. So I'm still finding that volume under the curve, if you will. Um, but the base is not a rectangle, okay? But we can still do it with this double integral. <clears throat> and here's how. It, so what they're going to call, instead of calling this region R, this is not a rectangular region. So they're going to call it D or something like that, region D. So we're going to do the double integral of region D of our two variable function. <clears throat> and so 
as far as uh, notation wise, all that's really changing here is we're calling it a region D instead of a region R because it's not a rectangle. Okay, that's really the only change there. But when we actually go to evaluate, all right, so here <clears throat> I just have to decide well, do I want to do the y's first or the x's first? Well, if we have this particular case, the, the choice is, is pretty much made for us, which way, which one we want to integrate first. Uh, in this particular case, if the y's turn out to be functions of x, you want to do the y's first. So the way I'm going to integrate this <coughs> is, uh, is by doing the y's first. Right, so I'm going to do this one first. Now, what are my limits for the y? Well, <clears throat> y is going to go between g1 of x and g2 of x. And so instead of having numbers here, you're actually going to have expressions in x. You might, some of them might be just a number, but <clears throat> generally speaking, you'll have a function of x here and then a function of x here for our y values. And then, of course, the x is going to be a b. Okay. All right, now, <clears throat> here's another little catch. This is, the book calls this one a type one region. Roman numeral one. Okay. Um, and the distinction is, well, this is a type one region because the y's are functions of x. We're going from this y to this y, and those are functions of x. So that, that's the distinction between a type 1 region and then what we'll do in a moment, type 2 region. But let's do, uh, <clears throat> let's do an example of this one here, first of all. All right, so let's evaluate. The double integral over d, x squared minus 2xy dA, where D equals, this is the way, uh, sometimes they'll write it, different ways they'll write it, but this is the way we're going to go with it here. All right, so the X's go from 0 to 3, and then the Y's go from 0 to 6 minus 2X. <laughs> oh, and I did point out here, um, <clears throat> if you can, use this arrow here, so this arrow kind of helps me. The reason I draw this arrow like this, because this shows me the arrow indicates, so make this note, the arrow indicates <clears throat> that I'm going from the lower y value to the upper y value and <clears throat> the significance of that is uh, you know those are functions of x and so that arrow kind of tells you whether you're going to integrate respect to y first or x so if you're going like this arrow like here this is this is saying you're going between the y values and so that that's what you're going to do first <laughs> so that's what you do first So whichever direction the arrow is going, do that one first. If it's going between the y's, do the y's first, and then hopefully you can figure out that the other one's going to be, you're going to do the x's first. All right? So anyway, <clears throat> with that in mind, all right, so let's draw, it's, it's probably a good idea to draw this uh, <clears throat> region just to, um, not necessarily the function, but draw the region D here, which is just, D is just an x and y. Uh, on the xy axis here. <clears throat> All right, so x goes from 0 to 3. The y's go from y equals 0. So this is, <clears throat> like I said, they don't, this doesn't have to necessarily be an expression that involves x, but what this is saying is I'm going from y equals 0 to y equals 6 minus 2x. So y equals 0 is just the, uh, 
it's just the x-axis. Y equals six minus two x is just a line, and so uh, starts at six, and then uh, yeah, it's nice. Turns out nice here because it uh, yeah it just goes to that zero and three there. So that's region D, and um, if it's in this form, it's probably not as uh, tricky to figure out what you're going to do here. But again, <coughs> because the y's are functions of x, or this one specifically is a function of x, I'm going to want to go from this y to that y first. The arrow tells me which way to go first. And that's, this is going from one y to the other y. So you're going to do the y's first. Now, we don't have, uh, right now, we don't have uh, a different way, but you know, there, is, there, there are going to be two ways you could possibly do this, so it's important to uh, get used to figuring out which, which one you want to do first. And of course, like I said, it's pretty obvious here when you do the y's first. <coughs> um, so we're going to go x is 0 to 3, and then y is 0 to 6 minus 2x for our x squared minus 2xy. All right, and so, yeah, again, we're doing the y's first, so it's dy and then dx because you do, as we indicated last time, you do the inner, inner one first. Now, what, uh, <clears throat> what this means is, well, let's just do it, all right? So I'm integrating respect to y first. What have I got? What is that? Uh, so the 0 to 3, I'm doing this integral first. So what does that give me? What would the uh, antiderivative be of that in respect to y? The x's are fixed, so that's just a number, fixed number, fixed amount. So the x squared y, it's just like a number there, so the x squared y. The x is fixed, so it's 2x, so that's fixed. So the antiderivative there would be 1 half y squared, which will cancel. So it's just going to be x, y squared. So I didn't skip too many steps there before you did it. <clears throat> All right, so now, again, I'm integrating respect to y. So when I go to uh, substitute these in, these are going in for y's. Keep that in mind. I don't necessarily have to indicate it there, but it might be a good idea to keep it straight. These are going to go in for the y's. The integral 0 to 3 and the dx just kind of come along for the ride for now. We'll deal with that in just a second. So yeah, these, so I'm going to plug in the upper one first for the y. And, you know, it, it can get uh, pretty long pretty, pretty quickly there, but uh, this one's not too bad. It would be x squared minus, sorry, x squared times 6 minus 2x, minus x times, and then 6 minus... 2x squared. Now the good news on this one is when I plug in y to be 0, I get zeros. That won't necessarily always happen, but uh, in this particular case, it does. <laughs> and so, yeah, just simplify that as, uh, as our next thing here to do. So it would be 6x squared minus 2x cubed. Um, see, this would be a, go ahead and fold this out, uh, what is that, 36, be minus 12x, another minus 12x, and minus 24x, plus two, uh, 4x squared. And then I distribute the minus x there, so it'd be minus 36x plus 24x squared minus 4x cubed dx, and it won't always happen, but we do have some like terms, so Combine those, and we'll be just about home free. Minus 6x cubed plus 30x squared minus 36x, all the like terms. So yeah, this one didn't turn out to be too bad of an antiderivative uh, problem. Uh, what do we got? <laughs> so now I'm just integrating respect to x. So was that negative uh, 6 fourths x to the fourth? Uh, it'd be 30 x cubed, so we divide by 3, so it would be 10x cubed. Uh, x squared, so we divide by 2, so it would be minus 18x squared. And then do that 0 to 3. And again, because they were nice to us, they gave us some zeros there. They won't always do that. <clears throat> uh, of course, that 
that's three halves. So it'll be minus three halves. Three to the fourth is 81. Uh, 10 times 27, so it's 270. And then minus 18 times 9. That is. So plug that in. All right, question or concern? Which, uh, again, what we're finding here is a volume. So if I could graph this z equals x squared minus 2xy function, right? Uh, what I'm finding is the, uh, the volume from, uh, you know, under the curve, but what does this seem to indicate? It's below, we've got more volume below the xy plane. You know, I'm talking about um, so I'm talking about from the curve or the uh, three dimensional surface, from the surface to this. Well, this seems to indicate I've got some below here. I probably. My guess is there's probably some above it too, but you know what I'm saying? So I've got more below than I have above. If I have any above, it's, it's less than the one below. So anyway, all right? Question or concern?